Pearl, you are. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Pearls of Wisdom. Today with Katrina, with Suchada, and with Navasit. Yeah, good morning. So we have a question. Uh, my question is, what for are we responsible? Well, uh, you are responsible for everything in your life. Mm -hmm. Everything what is in your life, you are connected with responsibility. Mm. That means whatever you do, you're responsible for. Whatever you say, you're responsible for. Whatever you react, you act, you are responsible for it because it's what you create in your life. So responsibility is kind of a difficult topic. And the main reason why is because it's misunderstood. So let's look at the questions that we had and we look at the questions and afterwards I talk about how we turn that whole thing around. Mm. Okay, so what exactly is responsibility? A responsibility is the ability to respond. Mm -hmm. Now you see in the word that ability to respond is something different than what we understand under the word responsibility that sounds more like a backpack is something that you carry oh yeah but in fact it is the ability to respond now everything what is in your life Everything what is a creation or part of creation for of yourself and what you call force, that means what comes from the outside, needs a response. Mm -hmm. Now, when we look at the world in the moment, what is going on and what is happening, most people do not respond. That is our main problem. People obey to something what they're told to do but they do not respond so if we don't respond you know respond to whom right first of all we know that we are living gods goddesses in a human body so to whom are we responsible? It is not even that I'm responsible to you or to anybody outside. The only responsibility I really have is to myself. What you would call the higher self or the divine self or whatever you want to call it. This is your main responsibility. This is the, the reason why you're here that you have come into this body and separated yourself from the, the other side of the veil, which the other part of us is still there, the divine self, the, and including all our past lives, which actually, as we said before, don't exist because time does not exist in that realm. It's just how we perceive it. So all our past lives are like sheets of paper stacked on top of a nail, you know, like in the restaurants, they're all here and we can all reach them in fact. So we, the responsibility we have is to that higher self, to ourself and all our past lives. Like in our past lives, we have experience. Like you have been in different roles and you had different experiences. First of all, you can access all that experience, like in meditation or whatever, or you can ask your higher self, your divine self, to connect you to a lifetime where you had a certain experience that will help you now to be more um, knowledgeable or know something in this life that you don't know. So you mean that we have to uh, have, um, 
we have to connect with our own knowledge to be yeah. able to to be able to respond um our own knowledge yes absolutely but not our knowledge from this ego body I was recently watching a, um, or listening to a, a channeling with Lee a Carol from Cryon. And he said, you know, the moment you're born, all you crave for is actually to reconnect with what you call God. Oh. And this is why you go to houses of worship. He calls temple churches houses of worship, which is very, uh, I think, a very great uh, expression. And you go and you pray and whatever, and you don't realize that you pray to yourself. Because as I said before, there is no God outside of you. Because God is within you, around you, you are God, and everybody is, we're all part of that God energy or whatever you want to call it, divine. I don't like the word God so much. Um, so this divine energy is also part of this divine energy or the Akashic records. And this is uh, the, the kind of the books of life, or again, we need words to make understand what it is. Everything is there. And also once you are connected with self, once your ego becomes your tool, your personality is not controlling you yourself, but yourself is controlling your ego. Hmm. And we talked about that too. We don't have to get rid of the ego. That's the worst misinterpretation. We have to learn to work with the ego that is in charge of our human um, role, our human um, expression in this lifetime but it's not supposed to rule us. And this is what is actually happening now is like, as long as you believe things that other people tell you and you just obey without knowing really the background and what is really happening. Mm -hmm. This is not responding. This is obeying. This is like a slave behavior. Uh -huh. Uh, it means that you, we, we have to do like a research for the thing that we heard. Yeah. And if you have, like, if people tell you something or whatever, you have to find out if it's really true. That is the response. Is this true? Like, for example, again, we have the word understanding. Mm -hmm. And, you know, understand, I stand under. I stand mm -hmm. under your rule. When the policeman asks you to understand, when you say yes, okay, you agree to stand under his rule. Mm -hmm. And this is what is in the words, what is so incredibly difficult. This is also one of the very important things to understand is about mistake. You cannot have a mistake because in the word you say you missed to take it. You missed it. You cannot have it. Mm. So no. every time when you say I make a mistake, that means I miss to take it. That means I miss to have the um, experience. I miss to understand what is behind it. I miss to understand, uh, to comprehend. See, I, I really struggle now to not say understand, but comprehend. Okay. Very difficult. Yeah. Uh, so anyway... Um, so many words are giving you an exact indication of what it is, including responsibility, ability to respond. But we um, are brainwashed into believing it is a heavy burden. Heavy burden. Okay. I think we were taught for the first, for the word responsible, we were taught that we have to bear with the consequence yes that's one part you have to oh. so mm. so it means but that you know, we have to be responsible for for our, our uh, action right yeah 
Oh. But not towards other human beings. This is just a contract between you and your higher self, you and your divine self. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, for example, you can never be responsible for somebody else. Now, see, there is the big, the big problem because people want you to make want to make you responsible for others. Mm -hmm. You cannot be responsible for others. You cannot respond really for somebody else. There is a little exception for a little child. As long as you have a child, especially the first seven years, the child is in your care and you respond instead of the child. But then from a karmic law in that way, after 14, you are responsible for yourself. You're not a child anymore in front of the law of karma. Before parents take on part of your responsibility because you are not able yet to respond because you do not have enough experience. Like imagine a two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight year old child does not have. But with around 14, at least in ancient times, it was around 14 was the puberty when the ladies, uh, the young girl have becomes into, has the menstruation and for the boys you hear and the voice changes, you know, that uh, poverty, that is the moment you become an adult. Oh. And you're an adult responsible to your own karma. And again, please don't think karma is just something negative. It's not. Mm. Because mm. karma is also all the positive talents and everything what you bring into that life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's also very misunderstood. Mm -hmm. So see, this is why uh, I also at one of my flower essences, I wrote about uh, that, about making mistakes. See, an intelligent people, they make many mistakes. Because they go and try and try and they miss yet maybe to take it. They have, they fail one, two, three, four times, but suddenly they get it. So intelligent people make many mistakes. Stupid people make always the same uh, because they don't learn anything, right? Oh, good lesson. <laughs> so mm -hmm. the, the, the people who are standing still and make always, you can see when you when we look at their lives, people who always make the same mistakes again and again and again, they don't learn. One example just comes uh, to mind is like I had once a client a long time ago, and he just he was divorced two times and he was just getting his third girlfriend and ask and, and send me pictures of all the three. Uh, for evaluation and you know what I have at that time for the horoscope you know they had all the same more or less topic for him they even <laughs> outside they look the same I had a hard time to to discriminate which is which so this is somebody who always uh when once when it's getting difficult then people run away because they don't want to take responsibility. They don't want to respond anymore because they have to face their own problem. Mm. So they run away. But of course, since the problem is not gone and the, the mistake is not solved and he has not yet understood the lesson, what is mm. happening? The problem is coming back. This coming back again and again and again. And mm -hmm. of course, he can marry the third lady again. It's said it's no problem. You're going to have the same problems with this woman. But I love her. I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just, this is just that attraction of the problem that you have not resolved. What well, people don't understand about falling in love. Mm -hmm. What do you fall into actually? Why are you attracted to a person? Because that person represents something that you don't have, but something that you want. <laughs> so mm. Mm. It's, it's, all, it's all like really um, connected. And I think one um, important thing to understand is that we really know what responsibility means. 
Mm-hmm. Once we know what it means, we can act accordingly. And that means that we can comprehend what we do and then look at the echo or at the mirror that comes back and we can read it and understand what is going on. Mm-hmm. So yes, we are responsible for all our actions. Absolutely. Um, I think, I think one, one thing that um, somehow is blocking us from being responsible is because we were taught that we have to be responsible also for how others would feel. Yes. What our action would causing other people to, you know, like a domino effect. Mm-hmm. Mm. So how, how, how should we look at this? Well, you know, a, a, a cosmic law also is don't do to others what you don't want them to do to yourself. Mm. So, um, of course, um, you get the response from other people if you are mean. You got a response for other people if you are nice to them. If you smile to them, if you're nice, they smile back. If you hit somebody, he or she might hit you back. It can be on many levels, no? not not physical, all right. So in that way, yes, responsible, but you can never ever be responsible for the action of somebody else. And once, um, you know, very often, um, we talked about that, I think, too. Our communication is not working right because we are afraid to say certain things because we are not allowed to say this because this person is an elder or a teacher or blah, 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 you know? So we assume that somebody wants this or wants that. And we act accordingly. So, for example, uh, I assume you like... Um, Genkia one. <laughs> so I feed you Genkia one as green curry, you know? <laughs> but uh, maybe this is the last, you don't like it. <laughs> but you maybe mentioned something once about the curry, so I come to the conclusion that you like it. Yeah. So I we assume definitely. very often what other people want, and, and then we react. Yeah according to the assumption because our communication doesn't work properly. So it means that it's come from my assumption, yes. right? Oh, actually, I have a very nice sample for that. When I was very young and I was married, my husband said that he loved potato. So, you know, with potatoes, you can make a million of different recipes. So I started to make potatoes like crazy every day. One day fried, one day whatever, you know, many, many different recipe. And after a couple of weeks, he said, what's wrong with you? Why do you make potatoes every day? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also have an example too. Sushada, she likes uh, Snoopy. And always, I always assume that she likes the wash that the Snoopy in there. But actually, she doesn't like the wash that Snoopy in there. Just only Snoopy. But I asked him to buy the wash for her. <laughs> to please. That's, that's so typical. Mm-hmm. And that, and this is actually what kills relationships. Mm. Lack of communication. And again, you know, remember in the word responsibility is the word respond. Yeah. So we do not properly respond to the other person because we don't know, because we mistake certain indications that we don't uh, don't know. We we don't know really because we are not communicating properly, answering in each other's question, talking. So there is one big mess in relationship and mostly everywhere. Something just come up i think other than that that we do not respond we don't have the responsibility to communicate with you know our, the friends family or lovers the most important is that we do not have the responsibility to ourselves yes we cannot communicate with 
our true self. Yes, absolutely. That's the big problem. So you know function on a program. Mm. Now, see, that's you are programmed from the moment you're born how to behave, <clears throat> what to say, what to do, whatever. And, and this is kind of disconnecting ourselves from the real self. The moment you're born, the moment you're coming into this body, out from the other side of the veil, where everything was in harmony, what everything was clear, and Cryon talked about the music, that this is kind of the music that you're embedded in the sound, the moment you're born here, you're kind of thrown into the abyss of darkness. That's why children cry. Mm. Suddenly it's that void, oh my God, kind of, where is, where is my heaven? And then you come into a naked, cold word, world. Even if your parents love you, even if you have all the um, attention, all the love that you need, the moment that they cut this umbilical cord and you're here, you're being alone, it is very difficult and most parents have no idea and also children have no idea what happened to them. And then they start to program. So you'll need to learn very fast the food, you know, when you cry and you get food, so the mother learns, the ch child cries, you give him food, and then the child stops crying. And food is one of the biggest addiction of people. And it is also one of the biggest addiction in any way. What you can see, even smoking is kind of uh, feeling um, um, numbing you yourself with also when you eat a lot of sugar and all that stuff that seemingly maybe we say chocolate make you happy 20 minutes and make you cry for two weeks so it's no it's no way to have a solution there that's why we want to go to the church to the temple to the houses of worship because inside we know there is something more and again, those who control us, those who control the world, they know that. So they make you addicted to worship. Mm -hmm. So the first step to get out of this mess is understand what responsibility really means, the ability to respond. And start to look around in your life, what is in your life? start to respond to it what do you want what do you want to keep what is not for you uh -huh. see the positive for you start to respond and start to listen also to the people around you like in a partnership when you like again what i said i assume that don't assume ask uh -huh. talk to each other Mm -hmm. remember one thing is very important also you fear what you don't know but something that you know you cannot hate anymore because you start to comprehend mm -hmm. like even even like for example when i came from europe to asia at that time i had a hard time to understand people here and they were really kind of it was very strange for me. But the moment I started to understand more and more the mentality, how they grew up, how they come to be the way they are, I like them. Because I understand uh, who they are. Not all of it yet. And, and I think I never will because part of me will always be European. But like I know some European people that came to visit, or I still see that. They all come and say, I don't recognize you. You're not anymore the person you were. I said, no, I'm not. Because now I have melded the kind of two cultures coming together. What helped me a lot to be more tolerant, more understanding of 
what and how different people live their lives. That is widening my horizon. So whenever you try to go somewhere to talk to somebody and it doesn't matter in your own country or in another country, the moment you start to see how other people live, what they care for, what they want, when you learn to respond to their needs, but not neglecting the needs of yourself, you evolve and you grow, your consciousness level get higher and higher, and you have much more peace of mind. And you're not anymore <laughs> just a simple slave that obeys order. So the next question would be um, from what you just told us I understand that we have to be responsible for our action yes if we got a, a good feedback we have to do good um, so we limit our responsibility to only the people we in contact what about the you know the community the world. or yeah or the country or the nature or everything else that not us well again once once you you have chosen to come here you have chosen to be born in a certain country in a certain family in certain circumstances and once you accept that and you start to respond, then you automatically care. Because when you respond to the higher self, the higher self is the divine, is the divine part of you that always has the good of everything in mind. Never, never wants to harm or hurt somebody. Then, of course, you do the best for your country, but you don't do the best for certain uh, politicians who make a lot of money um, on cost of other people. Like what happened now is there are certain, a very, very small percentage of people who made billions on the back of people who lost more or less everything they had. Mm -hmm. So to respond is definitely not to obey their orders. To really respond is stand up and say, no, no, hey, stop that. That's not what is good for the world. That is not what is good for my country. That is not good for my village even, for my family, for the people I love. And then you stand up and you tell them the truth. But unfortunately, a lot of people don't want to hear it. So see, this is what we also say, cognitive dissonance, when people cannot react anymore. And this is a, um, a symptom of the time today. But see, this is why more and more people have to start to take back their response ability, stand up. And this is what is happening because many people now start to see that what is happening it has nothing to do with our health. It has nothing to do with our well-being. It has just all to do with a certain elite to take everything away from us, what we have. And now we have, now you see groups getting together, creating even parallel economies. They are whole platforms now. They start to sell or they are, I think I said that before, that they are uh, job uh, offers that are all for the, the ones who didn't have to shut or whatever. And right now, especially right now in this moment, when we have the more stupid, the conjunction, a lot of energy is getting loose and they make their dark rituals now, hoping to win that war but we can do the opposite too. We can use the same energies, but in the positive way. Because, you know, um, all the energies are both. They have both sides, positive and negative. And if we interact with the positive way, light is much stronger than darkness because darkness does has, is not existent really. 
and it feeds off those who have the light. So if we don't give them our energy anymore, they have nothing to sustain them. So for our country, for our people, for our village, forever it is, what is your correct ability to respond as a divine being having a human experience? What is it? I think we just have to be true to ourselves. Yes. And be true to the others too. Mm. So once we make that step and step into our truth, we help others to step in their truth too. Uh, That's what I try in my workshop. That's all what I'm doing. It doesn't matter if they learn about mandalas or flower essences or astrology, whatever. What I try to help you is to take back your power. That's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To become a, a person with responsibility to yourself first, and I mean self, and to the environment, to the country, to the whole world. Mm. It sounds so heavy. <laughs> no, it's actually not. See, once you respond, you start to respond. It is like the whole heaviness will go away. If you look at it in the old way, the responsibility will tear you down. But once you just communicate and talk to people and look what is their need, you don't have to carry it. And especially once you know you cannot be responsible for others. You cannot be responsible for the reaction for others. There is something that you have to like uh, step back and, and make your boundaries. Okay, I give you the truth. That's my truth. What you make out with it is yours. And then you will see that, uh, of course, some people might leave you and they're not in your life anymore. But with this energy of truth, you will certainly start to attract other people in your life that also talk about truth, that also know what response ability is. And then you can start a parallel society in a way with these people helping the others to rise up higher in their consciousness level. Mm -hmm. But okay, in the moment, I agree, Suchada, when we maybe have never thought about it in that way, that it might be sounding a bit heavy. But you will see once you really um, start to lift that, start to tell your truth, you will be liberated of a lot of uh, stuff that does not belong into your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. Because it's also not healthy to hold on to people as friends or whatever who have a complete different consciousness level and don't really fit in our life anymore. <laughs> it's sometimes really easier to move on. And that mm. does not mean you have to be angry or fight, fight or whatever. It's just like, I love you, I release you. Uh, that you can pa uh, that you can go on your way not not in a negative way of kicking somebody out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, mm. one of the main important key is really talk to each other be honest to each other without being afraid to hurt but you know when once we make clear this is my boundary then we can get along in a different way and then we can respond to the other person because we can know what the other person need and not assume <laughs> we also assume we need something <laughs> yeah sometimes we don't know what we need yeah, yeah. 
but see that's also um once you're in contact with your higher self and you talk you know it's like people tell me she's crazy she talks to myself to herself yes i talk to myself i don't talk to my ego i talk to myself and i receive answers mm -hmm. and i can even contact like i can ask i have a problem in this life for example a mechanical problem or something i remember when i built my house first time here i went to bed with the question how can i solve that problem and in the morning i had a picture in my head i draw it and i went to the workers and they did it wow <coughs> it's from the akasha yes this is another uh, personality who was a mechanic or that, um, whatever mm -hmm. okay. and if i if i don't have a lifetime in my line I might have had in a other lifetime a husband or might have a brother-in-law or a whatever who knew and then this person can ask and get back to me the answer. So assume you had a hundred lifetimes and say 50 times you were men, 50 times you were women. So you had husbands, you have wives, you have children, you have, they're all around. This is all still there somewhere even if our linear mind cannot understand it. Hmm. So we have, in fact, we have access to every knowledge, any knowledge hmm. that is. Hmm. And at a point when you really connect it to the self in a very, very open way, you talk to it all the time, you get any answer that you need, then you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. is what meditation is about. And this is why in a certain time on that planet, people had to go to a temple to meditate, to become a monk or a nun or whatever, to be away from the mundane world, to be able to keep up that connection but uh -huh. um the energy has shifted and that was i was uh, thinking was in 86 or 87 we talked about that also and this is the moment that we don't need to go in a temple anymore to get that connection that is the moment that our whole life has to become meditation meaning being centered and having this connection all the time but it's a very good start to go in a temple and first reconnect in the quiet or in any retreat, you know, to, to reconnect in the quiet, but then keep it up. Don't go home like many people go on Sunday to the church and then they one hour, okay, and then Monday they are going to do bad things again. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, and then they go next uh, uh, whatever day to confession and then they think they're okay. They're not, and you're not. Nobody is. At that moment, when we are rising higher in the consciousness level, spiritually up, that means we are all the time in connection with the higher self. Even if you're angry, even if you're hurt, even if whatever happened, mm -hmm. you always have that little voice whispering in your ear that you know exactly what to do. And the more you listen, the more you respond, the more... Uh, um, both way communication it is uh, this uh, is responsibility the ability to respond to anything what happened in your life uh, mm, with communication yes mm -hmm. good then you understand then nothing can really harm you or hurt you mm -hmm. And then you are under the law of the divine. Ah. And I gave you certain samples already in my life that the human law could not touch me. Mm -hmm. Because I very clearly stand under the law of the divine. And this law is higher. Uh -huh. mm. 
Wow. Okay. Any more questions here? Hmm. Not really. No, nothing. Okay. Very, very, very good. Very. Okay. So I wish you a wonderful weekend and we'll talk again soon. Okay. And for you, if you listen online, please like our video and share it with your friends. Thank you so much. Bye.